Allah Azza wa Jal described this Ummah as the best Ummah. Allah Azza wa Jal said, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas. You are the best group of people that has ever been brought out for the people. The best group of people from all of the nations, you are the best one. But Allah Azza wa Jal, He didn't limit this to description to that point only. He told us why. He told us the reason why this Ummah is the best Ummah. Whenever this reason is present, then this Ummah will be the best. And whenever this reason it goes away, then the state of the Ummah will become as you see, you'll see that it will no longer have that characteristic that Allah described it with. What is the thing that made us the best of all of the nations? You are the best people to be brought out for the people. Anfa'uhum. You are the most beneficial for the people. Why? You tell the people to do good. And you stop the people. You prohibit the people from doing wrong. وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ And you believe in Allah. When these three things are present, you deserve the title, the best of people, the best of nations. When you have these three things, تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ You command what is good, and you forbid what is evil, and you believe in Allah. And Allah Azza wa Jal explained this and He commanded you to do it. A few ayat before in the same surah in Surah Ali Imran, Allah Azza wa Jal commanded you, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ let there be among you a group of people who command what is good and forbid what is evil and they believe in Allah. Or they command what is good and they forbid what is evil and they will be the successful people. So many times we think of this on the level of the society. But this doesn't begin on the level of the society and the community. It begins with you and the people around you, in your home, with your families, the people nearby, near around you. You have to command what is good and you have to stop what is evil and prohibit and forbid people from doing what is wrong. This is what makes you from the best of the nations. This is what gives you the title of, or this afdaliya, this making you better than others, is because you command people to do what is good. You tell them, do what is good. And you stop them, and you say, stop doing what is wrong. It's not just that we are missing this in our community. We are missing this in our houses. We are missing this with our children. We're missing this with our spouses. The Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, and the hadith is the hadith of, of Abi Hurairah radiyallahu an. And the hadith is in Sahih Muslim. Man ra'a minkum munkara fal yugayirhu biyadih. Fa in lam yastati' fa bi lisanih. Fa in lam yastati' fa bi qalbihi. وَذَٰلِكَ أَضْعَفُ الْإِيمَانِ وَفِي رِوَايَةِ وَلَيْسَ وَرَاءَ ذَٰلِكَ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ حَبَّةُ خَرْدًا Whoever of you sees something wrong, let him change it with his hand. And if he can't, let him change it with his tongue. And if he can't, let him hate it in his heart. And that is the weakest of faith in a narration there is not even a mustard seed of Iman after that. 
there is not even a mustard seed of Iman after that. When you see something wrong, you change it with your hand. But the question is, who can change wrong things with their hand? Can everybody change the munkar biyadihi with his hand? No. The one who has authority, the one who has a sulta, they have authority, they have control. They are the one who can stop it with their hand. But you have control. Where? You have control over your spouse. You have control over your children. You have control in some situations. Yes, you can't go up to someone in the street, smoking a cigarette and pull it from his hand and throw it on the ground. Because you don't have the authority. You don't have the ability to do it. But with your children in your household, when they're watching something haram on their phone, you have the ability to go and take it off them and switch it off and put it in the cupboard. That's what you have to do. Change it with your hand. And if you can't change it with your hand because you don't have the authority, you don't have the power to change it with your hand, then change it with your tongue. But can everybody change it with their tongue? Is everybody able to change evil with their tongue? No. To change evil with your tongue, you have to have knowledge. Because perhaps you will go to a brother, you will say to him, Ya Akhi, stop smoking, this is munkar. He says, no, it's not munkar. My sheikh said to me, it's mubah, it's permissible. Oh, okay then. He doesn't have an answer because he doesn't have knowledge. But if he has knowledge, he comes and he says, Bal haram, rather it is haram. And I'm going to tell you why it's haram. One, two, three, and he starts to give the evidence. Don't throw yourself with your own hand to your own death. Don't cause your death with your hand. The people who waste their money are the brothers of the devils. Don't cause harm to other people. Haram, haram, haram. It says haram. Then the person stops because he has the knowledge to tell him why it's wrong, to explain to him that it's wrong. Sometimes you don't have the power and you don't have the knowledge. So what shall you do? You saw something wrong, but you can't explain it why it's wrong. And you don't have the power. Perhaps you can find someone who does. Because not every time, like the scholars, they took, well, takun minkum, some of you, as some of them said. Some of the scholars said, this is the evidence that if we can find someone to do it, the responsibility will go from us. Some of them said this. If we can find someone, maybe I can find someone who has sulta. I see somebody who is stealing from somebody else. And I can't take hold of them, but maybe I can get someone in authority to stop them. Maybe I see someone doing something haram. I can't tell them because I don't have knowledge. But there's a person of knowledge I can go to and say, Ya Akhi, please, can you explain to him why this is haram? This is not the job of just two or three people. This is not the job of one person in the society. This is the job of everybody. How many times do you pass by munkar? How many times do you pass by haram and it washes over you? Until the point where you don't even realize that it's haram anymore. Isn't that true? You see in yourself that you go by the haram and you see so much of it and you don't do anything about it that it gets to the point where you forget that it's even haram. And maybe a person would become angry and say, Ya Akhi, why are you being mutashaddid? Why are you being strict? Why are you being rough and tough with people? This is not haram. Because he saw it so many times and he never did anything about it. That his heart became like it didn't exist. And he lost the feeling that this is haram. And he started not to care about it. 
So he doesn't care when his family does it. He doesn't care when his children does it or do it. He doesn't care when he sees it outside because he didn't do anything about it and it kept passing by you day after day after day and nothing was done. The least you can do is to hate it in your heart. Some people can't even bring themselves to do that. They can't even bring themselves when they see something evil to say, this is wrong. Well, I wish that I could have the ability to stop it or I wish that I could have the knowledge to stop it. That is the minimum you can do. That is the minimum when you see haram outside, you walk into the masjid, maybe even inside the masjid, you see some people doing things wrong. You say, I wish I could stop this. I wish that I could have the knowledge to tell them that it's wrong. At least try to find somebody who can. Imagine if everyone in this room, imagine if everyone in this room did that. If every time you saw something wrong, you either stopped it or you either spoke out against it or you either found someone who could or at least you wish in your heart that you could stop it. And like the Prophet ﷺ said, وَلَيْسَ وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ حَبَّةُ خَرْدَلِ if you can't even do that, you don't even have a mustard seed of Iman in your heart. If you can't even find it in your heart to say, I wish I could change this. How many of us, we have shops and businesses. We allow the haram to happen inside of our shop. We don't care. We allow the haram to happen in our living room. We don't care. Is there even a mustard seed of Iman after that? At least wish in your heart that you could change it. At least. But it's important that we understand, my brothers in Islam, that there are some rules and there is some fiqh to telling people to do what's good and stopping people from doing what's wrong. And if we don't understand this fiqh, Sometimes we might make a mistake trying to do something good. We might try to do something very good and we might end up doing something very wrong. The most important of these is that if by stopping something wrong, you bring something which is worse, then it's not permissible for you to do that. If you're stopping something wrong and you bring something worse, you cause a munkar, which is akbar wa a'zam min hadhi, min hadhi al munkar from that munkar you make a bigger one you make a bigger problem and this is why you have to think about how you tell someone not everything you tell someone is with a stick in your hand sometimes you go and say Akhi, and you start raising your voice and telling them and they get angry and they raise their voice and then their friend comes and your friend comes and before you know the people are fighting with each other. Because the person didn't think, what will the outcome be? They didn't think, what will the outcome be? How do I say this in a way that will change this? Because I want to change it. Everything wrong that I see, I want to change that wrong thing. And every chance to tell people to do good, I want to take that chance. And that means you have to try changing yourself as well. Because how can you be someone who is telling people to do good and stopping people from doing wrong, but you yourself are not applying it to yourself first? People will not take it from you. They will not accept it from you. They'll not be happy. They will say, Ya Akhi, you stop it first and then I'll stop it second. Still, you have to tell them, you can't be silent, you have to say something. But you have to think, if I can't stop it on myself, maybe the first person I need to stop from the munkar is me. And the closest people around me, like my children, my spouse, my wider family, my neighbor and so on. And like I said, if you can't stop it with your hand and you can't stop it with your tongue, at least hate it in your heart at least hate it in your heart and it's really important to understand that this 
all of it requires knowledge. Because how can you tell people to do what is good if you don't know what is good? And how can you stop people from doing what is haram if you don't know what is haram? And of course, all of us know something from it, some things. All of us know some things. But the more you know about Islam, the more you will be able to make this change. You will be from the most beneficial of the people for the people. Wallahi, if a person were to follow this, and the advice is to myself and to you, if a person were to follow this, just one person could change a whole community. Just one person could change a whole masjid. If just one person practiced it. So how about if many people practiced it? There would be no evil that happens except somebody would be trying to change it somewhere or another. And that will bring about good for the whole society and it will bring about good for the whole ummah. And it will bring about a situation where you will be khayru ummah, the best of all of the nations. Aqulu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfiru Allah al-azim li wa lakum ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه يغفر لكم إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My brothers in Islam when we are telling people to do what's right and stopping people from doing what's wrong we need to bear in mind the two conditions for our deeds to be accepted that is that they have to be sincerely for Allah and they have to be done the way that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam showed us how to do. So there is no point in telling people or stopping people from doing wrong if your intention is to be above them. You want to show how, you want to show that you're better than them. Or you want the people to look at you and say, MashaAllah, he is a person who is commanding good and forbidding evil. She is a person who is doing this. It has to be for Allah. And when it's for Allah, you really care about the person you're talking to. You're not talking to them because you are so high and they are so low. But you're talking to them as a person who is sincere. Sincere for Allah and sincere towards your brother and your sister in Islam. You want good for them. My brothers in Islam, if we don't do this, then there is a hadith and the hadith is the hadith of Hudayfa. The hadith is in Jami' al-Tirmidhi. And it tells us of a severe warning that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِهِ لَتَأْمُرُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَتَنْهَوُنَّ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ أو لا يوشكن الله أن يبعث عليكم إقابا من ثم تدعونه فلا يستجاب لكم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, "By the one whose hand my soul is in, you will command what is good, and you will stop people from doing what is wrong, or Allah will be about to send a punishment against you." meaning it will not be long before Allah sends a punishment against you, then you will make dua and Allah will not answer your dua. That is the punishment. If we don't start telling people to do what's good and stopping people from doing what's wrong, then Allah will send a punishment and then you will make dua and you will make dua and you will make dua and Allah will not answer your dua. So each person according to their ability. Even if you just start with the closest people around you. But I want to conclude this khutbah with an important point that maybe people might have missed. And that is 
that calling the people to Allah and telling people about Islam and inviting people to become Muslim is one of the greatest examples of commanding what is good and forbidding what is evil. Because there is no good greater than worshipping Allah alone. And there is no evil worse than making a partner with Allah. So the greatest good you can command is to command the people to worship Allah alone. And the greatest evil you can stop people from is the evil of making a partner with Allah. My brothers in Islam, every day we pass by tens and tens and tens of non-Muslims. Even if people are living in a Muslim country, there are non-Muslims who pass by you. You interact with them at work. They come to your businesses. Maybe you work for them and so on. One of the most important examples of commanding what is good and stopping what is wrong is to tell people about Islam and to stop people from making a partner with Allah. We don't have the ability to force them. Allah has not given us in this situation that we are in today in England. Allah has not given us power to force them or threaten them. But we can tell them about Islam. We can change this munkar with our tongue. We can change this munkar with the pen. We can tell people about Islam. If you can't tell them about Islam, introduce them to someone who can tell them about Islam. I know many of us, we try to invite people to Islam through our good actions, and that's good. But we also have to tell them because it's not enough just to be kind to someone and that's enough. You have to be kind to them and you have to show them that this kindness comes from Islam and introduce them to Islam and invite them to Islam. And if you can't, then find somebody who can. As a masjid, as a community, come together to give them maybe a leaflet, uh, something, a website, a video, something that will encourage them to become Muslim. Talk to them about their religion. Talk to them about Islam. Tell them why worshipping Allah is the most important of all of the good things. And making a partner with Allah is the worst of all of the bad things. And if you can convey that message to the people around you, then you will see an even bigger change. You'll see the people entering into Islam by Allah's permission in crowds and the people changing the state of this community and this nation through people coming into Islam and being sincere to Allah Azza wa Jal in it. So it's very important that we bear in mind the comprehensive nature of calling people to do good and stopping people from doing wrong. And we try to implement that for ourselves, for our families, for the people around us. And we realize that included in this is to try to share the message of Islam with the non-Muslims that we interact with in our daily life. ثُمَّ صَلُّوا وَسَلِّمُوا رَعَاكُمُ اللَّهُ عَلَى مُحَمَّدِ بْنِ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ كما أمركم بذلك ربكم فقال قولا كريما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم آتي نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا, آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير والموت راحة لنا من كل شر ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان 
اللهم كن لهم ناصرا ومعينا ومعينا وظهيرا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه وآلائه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيم الصلاة